When we last left off, we were looking at two competing mechanisms for substitution at sp3 carbon. These SN1 and SN2 reactions take place by different mechanisms. In the SN2 mechanism, both of these compounds, the substrate with the leaving group and the nucleophile, are involved in the rate determining step. The reaction coordinate diagram looks something like this, with this high energy point representing a transition state where we have partial bonds formed and broken with the nucleophile and leaving group. By contrast, the SN1 mechanism goes through a carbocation intermediate. Thus, only this one compound is involved in the rate determining step. Once the carbocation is formed, it reacts with a nucleophile to give products. The reaction coordinate diagram looks like this with a low energy well for our intermediate carbocation. In the SN2 mechanism, we have inversion of stereochemistry, a change in stereochemistry at a chiral center. This is because our nucleophile needs to approach from the opposite face of the leaving group. And basically, the substrate flattens and kind of almost flips like an umbrella turning inside out in the high wind. Because the nucleophile needs to approach from the opposite face, certain substrates like this tertiary bromide cannot undergo the SN2 reaction mechanism. With these three carbon atoms, the nucleophile is sterically hindered from approaching in that way. The SN1 mechanism goes through a planar carbocation. The nucleophile can approach from either face, and we get a mixture of stereoisomers as products. Polar protic solvents increase the rate of the SN1 reaction because they are very good at stabilizing the formation of ions, which accelerates the rate determining step. By contrast, these polar protic solvents decrease the rate of SN2 reactions because they tie up the incoming nucleophile and raise the activation energy of the reaction. However, in SN2 reactions, we do need polar solvents. They're just polar aprotic, three examples of which are shown here. The structure of the substrate is the most important factor in determining if a reaction will go SN1 or SN2. Because the SN1 reaction goes through this intermediate carbocation, substrates that cannot form a carbocation will not proceed by this mechanism. Substrates for which the SN2 backside attack is hindered, such as this tertiary substrate, cannot proceed via the SN2 mechanism and only has SN1 available to it. I was depicting these carbocations in a geometry that mapped onto this, but please note that carbocations will always be trigonal planar and look like this. Finally, we met three substrates that have both the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms available to them. So we still need to explore a couple of factors that will help us determine if we have SN1 or SN2 in that case. Let's dive into that now. In the SN2 reaction, the nucleophile is involved in the rate determining step. This is pushing out the leaving group here, and so stronger nucleophiles will promote SN2 reactions in our borderline cases. So how do we know if we have a strong nucleophile? Well, there's all sorts of nucleophilicity tables. You can look them up. There's some that look at the reaction of a nucleophile with methyl bromide and measure the rate, but for our purposes, we can say that nucleophilicity roughly parallels basicity. This is going to allow us to use pKa's to compare nucleophile strength. This pKa comparison works best when we're looking at nucleophiles with the same attacking atom. So let's look at two oxygen-based nucleophiles. We'll compare acetate to ethoxide. Well, there's no proton to remove here, so we need to look at the pKa's of the conjugate acids. This conjugate acid, acetic acid, has a pKa of 4.6, and ethanol has a pKa of about 16. Acetic acid is a stronger acid, which means it has a weaker conjugate base. 
acetate is resonance stabilized, so it doesn't mind losing this proton and sitting around by itself quite as much. This makes ethoxide our stronger nucleophile. The conjugate acid didn't want to lose that proton in the first place, so this conjugate base is more unstable, it's more reactive, it's a better base and a better nucleophile. Another trend is that nucleophilicity increases as we move down a row on the periodic table. Let's use ethanol again, and let's compare it to an analogous compound using the element just below it on the periodic table. This is ethane thiol, and it is our better nucleophile in this case. This is a general trend. Larger elements tend to be better nucleophiles. This is because their electrons are further away from the nucleus. They're smeared over a larger surface area because this is a larger element. And so whereas these electrons are going to be very close to the oxygen atom, sulfur's electrons are a little bit further away from the atom. And so it's easier for those electrons to distort as they make that new bond and displace the leaving group. Finally, anions are going to be stronger nucleophiles than neutral species. Building on this example, the sodium salt of this compound is going to be the stronger nucleophile. We can draw out charges on these two atoms to see that sulfur actually has a formal negative charge. With these electrons more available, nucleophilicity increases. Now that we've outlined our three general trends, let's just show you some examples of nucleophiles that you might see in these types of reactions. So we met ethoxide up here. Hydroxide is also a good nucleophile, maybe in the form of sodium or potassium hydroxide. Halogens are good nucleophiles. For example, chloride and iodide. Cyanide is a good nucleophile. This is a cool example because it gives us a carbon-carbon bond, which is awesome for building up carbon skeletons to make more complex organic molecules. Azide is a good nucleophile. Azide can be reacted and then reduced to give an amine. Thiols are also good nucleophiles, as we saw here. These all have negative charge on them, so they have a lot of pushing power. These will be great nucleophiles for the SN2 reaction when we're thinking about our borderline cases. Now, in the SN1 reaction, the leaving group leaves on its own. The nucleophile doesn't need to be a powerful nucleophile, and we can actually even have neutral nucleophiles add to substrates in SN1 reactions. So let's write down a couple examples of neutral nucleophiles. We have water. Ammonia can be a good nucleophile in SN1 reactions. And in the previous video, we talked about acetate or acetic acid being a nucleophile in SN1 reactions. So again, since we don't need the nucleophile to push out this leaving group in the SN1 reaction, neutral nucleophiles are perfectly fine. In fact, in SN1 reactions, it's common to run the reaction with the nucleophile as the solvent. It gives us lots of molecules ready to attack that carbocation once it forms, and these are all polar protic. Let's look at one example of a strong nucleophile promoting an SN2 reaction. When this primary alkyl halide is treated with sodium ethoxide, we get an SN2 reaction that produces an ether. This reaction is called the Williamson etherification and works very well for primary halides. However, with branched halides, there's something I need to tell you. So if this substrate was secondary or actually even tertiary, this is a strong base and strong bases can actually promote a different reaction that competes with substitution called elimination. Instead of substituting, the sodium methoxide is going to abstract a proton from this substrate, and this will form an alkene. Elimination reactions compete with substitution reactions. If you thought SN1 and SN2 was bad enough, we have another whole reaction pathway going on, but that's a topic for a different video. Both of these reactions require a leaving group to leave, whether it leaves on its own or leaves because it's pushed off of the molecule. So we need to make sure that the group we have on here is actually a good leaving group. And of course, SN1 reactions are going to be a little bit more sensitive to leaving group ability, but both of these reactions do require a good leaving group. 
we'll find that the best leaving groups are conjugate bases of strong acids. Okay, let's make sense of this statement. Consider the ionization of HCl in water. This is a strong acid and dissociates essentially completely. What this means is that the chloride ion is really stable on its own. It doesn't need to hang out with its proton. It dissociates completely because it's pretty happy just sitting around as this anion. Well, if it doesn't have a lot of affinity for its proton, it's just fine leaving a molecule also in one of these substitution reactions. So this means we can again use pKa's to think about leaving group ability. Let's look at a few examples of good leaving groups. Here we're looking at chloride, bromide, and this o tosyl toluene sulfonyl. You can look up that structure. Let's write down their conjugate acids. And now let's consider the pKa's. HCl has a pKa of negative 8. HBr beats that with a pKa of negative 9. Tosyl alcohol has a pKa, again negative, a little bit less so at minus 1.34. And what this is telling us is that these groups here don't need to be associated with their proton that much, and so they're good leaving groups. Okay, now that we know some good leaving groups, let's look at some poor leaving groups. So we know which groups we should not have on the molecule if we want to do an SN1 or an SN2 reaction. We're going to look at the leaving group, its conjugate acid, and the pKa of that conjugate acid. The first one is hydroxide. OH- rarely acts as a leaving group. Its conjugate acid is water, and that has a pKa of 15.7. NH2- is also a poor leaving group. The conjugate acid is ammonia, with a pKa of 38. We met sodium ethoxide. In fact, all alkoxides are going to be poor leaving groups. The conjugate acid is an alcohol, and alcohols have a range of pKa's hovering around 16. Now let's look at an example of a poor leaving group that you might not quite expect. Fluoride is one of the halogens, but it is a poor leaving group in SN1 and SN2 reactions. Its conjugate acid is HF, and that has a pKa of 3.17. So you might not expect fluoride to be such a poor leaving group based on the pKa of HF, However, fluorine forms very strong covalent bonds, which makes it unlikely to act as a leaving group in SN1 and SN2 reactions. Before we leave off, I want to show one more reaction example that'll give us one more awesome leaving group. Tertiary alcohols can be treated with acid, let's say HBr, and the electrons on oxygen can attack this proton. The alcohol is now protonated, because this is tertiary, we can't do backside attack due to steric hindrance. And this group leaves on its own as a molecule of water. This forms a carbocation that gets attacked by Br-. This attack produces a tertiary bromide. So in this example, we started with hydroxide, which is a poor leaving group. It would never leave on its own, and we need this to undergo an SN1 reaction since it's tertiary. But protonating this results in an excellent leaving group. So let's add water as a leaving group to our good leaving group list. The conjugate acid is the hydronium ion with a pKa of negative 1.7. So we've shown that our good leaving groups are the conjugate bases of strong acids. And we could look at the pKa's again here. We've identified a few leaving groups that are very poor leaving groups. Now, OH- is a poor leaving group, but we can protonate it to form water. There are other ways to make alcohols into good leaving groups, and I want to just finish on those reactions. Alcohols can be treated with a compound called mesyl chloride or tosyl chloride, which forms this leaving group in the presence of an amine base to form these compounds, which are both good leaving groups. All right, so we went over some methods to determine nucleophile strength. Strong nucleophiles will promote SN2 reactions. We looked at good leaving groups for both SN1 and SN2 reactions and examined some poor leaving groups and learned how to convert alcohols into better leaving groups. As ever, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel.